Hey YouTube, this is Patrick. This is my review of Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 5, The Ghost of Harrenhal. Um, I'm in Pennsylvania right now, actually at my aunt's house, my aunt and uncle's house, um, in the basement, so I gotta keep a little bit quieter uh, right now, because everyone, people are upstairs. Um, I snuck down here to kind of do this quickly, to get this up before, um, before, like, I wouldn't be able to do this until, like, Thursday night if I couldn't do it now, so if this one's gonna be a little bit shorter, a little less organized, sorry. Um... But yeah, anyway, this episode, a lot of people I, I heard around the internet thought it was either one of the best of the season, or one of the best they've ever done, or almost one of the worst. I was surprised people found it to be one of the best, really, and that was just because of my first watch of it. Um, the opening of the episode just kind of threw me off completely. As a book reader, I knew what was coming, um, and I gotta say, I think the decision to put it at the beginning of an episode was a mistake. Um, because to be honest, it happened. It happened so quickly, and that, and it didn't happen. And just, and personally, just, just personally for me, it didn't happen in the way that I envisioned it. And I know that now that's my problem, not really the show's problem. Um, but um, it threw me off. And to be honest, I didn't really get back into the episode until near toward the end. Now I rewatched the episode, and I enjoyed it much more. But on the initial watch, I just I the whole entire pace of the episode kind of, it, it like, threw me off completely. Um, so I kind of had, like, a, a pretty much a pretty big negative reaction throughout, like, three quarters of this episode, and then the last, like, or at least two-thirds, and the last, like, third of it kind of, like, saved it for me completely. But on a rewatch, I enjoyed it much, much, much more. Um, I just thought it was a little more stilted, too. Like, visually, it just wasn't as interesting. I got the director wrong, also, by the way. Last week, I said it was David uh, Nutter. It wasn't, um... It was, uh, see, I don't remember the guy's name, but it wasn't David Nutter. He's directing next week's episode. Anyway, um, starting off the death of Renly, like I said, I thought it was too quick. I thought Bran's reaction shot was too kind of like over the top. Um, and it just, because it was right at the beginning, because it was such a big moment, it just like threw me off completely. Um, I didn't even realize the, the shadow thing looked like Stannis until the rewatch. Um, I just, I don't know, it just threw me off. Uh, I've said that too many times already. Um, and then they got out of that, got out of that quick, um, you know, Catelyn got Bran, and Bran left quick, and that was fine, um, and then it moved, like, right into, like, the Littlefinger scene with Loras and Marguerite, and Loras didn't seem like he was, like, grieving, like, that much for him, even though it was the next day, um, I like the whole Littlefinger Marguerite scene, but it just, everything seemed to be moving way too quickly. Uh, right into Stannis with Davos, and I was just, I was trying to get my bearings still at this point. Um, and these were all good scenes, especially the Stannis-Davos one, where Stannis showed some, you know, remorse and everything like that, and it was nice. Um, and nice to see that he does listen to Davos and listen to some reason, and now they've started to set up the battle. Um, uh, which I guess I'll just try to get into the whole thing of the episode, where they, they started setting up the battle, the big battle that is obviously coming. Um... Stannis has his ships, and he has his army, and now he just has to sail to King's Landing, and that's it. Um, Tyrion uh, still had, you know, some good scenes in King's Landing, with first with Cersei, then with Lancel, um, the whole thing with the wildfire. Um, they uh, got away again with not showing us really a lot of special effects, just a bunch of jars in a, bu in a big room. Um... It, uh, again, it was all pure setup for the, you know, it was almost like the groundwork for the battle was completely being laid. We know we have Stannis and his ships, and we know we have King's Landing and their wildfire, pretty much, to, you know, so we see, like, that already, and obviously those things are going to escalate as the season goes until we, you know, until there's actually a fight. So, uh, I like that that was, like, both kind of set up directly within the episode, um coming right off of Renly's death. Um, which, again, I can see why they did it that way, why they start, why they thought it was a good idea to start the episode with him getting killed. Because um, then everything just, like, feeds off of that from that moment at the beginning of the episode. So the episode is completely about changing plans. And that was the theme of the episode. Everyone's plans just completely changed from what it originally was. Um, moving right away along with, like, Theon. You know, he's clearly funny again, that everyone is just, you know, doesn't give a shit about him. 
Um, and he just quickly decided to change his plans. And no, I'm not taking the Stony Shore. I'm taking Torrance Square because then Winterfell will come, and then I'll take Winterfell, which is cool, which is obviously what he's supposed to be doing. Um, and that's what Bran's dream was about the um, the water coming into Winterfell. It meant you know water coming means the Iron Men and the sea and the ships and the sea and everything. Um, you know, Bran was just sitting there preparing for one thing, and all of a sudden, bam, he has to do something, react quickly. Um, so yeah, so that, another, like, another example of just quick thinking. Um, I know I'm jumping around, but going back to Bran and Kat, it was a really, really, really nice scene. Uh, and again, it's Bran thought she was going to be for Renly completely. Catelyn thought she had her plan set with Renly and Rob to a lie. Didn't happen. Now the two of them are together. Brian pledges to Cat. Cat, you know, basically allows her to come back with her and basically says, I'll let you do whatever you want when the time comes. Even like a future, you know, change of plans is, is like kind of inset there. But uh, it was a great scene. It was actually a pretty big emotional scene, too. Again, Michelle Fairley was wonderful. And Gwendolyn Christie was really, uh, she was much better in, in for the rest of the episode, with the exception of that one reaction shot scene, at least for me. Um, but yeah, let me uh, try to think. What else fast? Oh, John, North of the Wall. Iceland looks beautiful, by the way. Um, and I love all the jokes. Uh, you know, at Sam's expense, it was just it was it was funny. It was nice uh, levity again for the episode. Um, he uh, he had to change his plans quickly. They think they're doing one thing. That Craster's all of a sudden now he's going off with half hand, and Night's Watch has to change their plans against the uh, wildlings, their complete mode of attack. So there was a change of plans with that. Um, and then moving over to Korth, which is my favorite part of the episode. Uh, first of all, because we got to see a dragon, which was particularly cute. Um, plus, that scene was great with three just gorgeous women in, women in it. Um, Danny's plans have completely changed now, where she's talking to Zaro about what he wants, about what they're going to do. You know how she now just realized that Robert's dead, so now she's changing her complete frame of mind, saying, "Let's go get Westeros now." And then Jorah just comes in and changes her plans again, also, which is my favorite scene of the episode with her and Jorah, where she realizes that yeah, she you know this guy's in love with me, and she just gets very upset by it. You could see it on her face. Um, it was just really well, I liked it really well done. And it's nice to say that a dandy scene was my favorite of an episode because the first you know three first four, she really hasn't been that prominent to say that she has, you know, the best scene in the episode, at least for me, was just really nice. Um, Korth, I think, on the inside looks very nice. The weirdness of um, some of the characters, which I'll get into in the spoiler section, um, was very nice on display. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I just... Uh, yeah, I loved everything that happened in Korth. Then Arya, again, her plans have changed, she thought she was going north, going to Winterfell, and all of a sudden she's stuck as a cupbearer for Tywin Lannister, and while that, by the way, that was a great scene, she, um, they're kind of, like, feeling each other out with him not really know who he is kind of, you know, dueling with here. Um, Maisie Williams, again, fantastic, um, as is Charles Dance, so, uh, that was another one of my favorite scenes of the episode. Um, yeah, and then everything with Jock and Hargar, the, the, the three deaths, again, again, she, you know, thinks the situation is one way, now she has a guy, like, basically like a genie, that can just grant her three deaths, pretty much, and, um, yeah, everything is just, es it was nice, you know, she killed off the, the one torturer, and everything's just escalating, um, you can feel it, we're halfway done, and, you know, you're supposed to be at the kind of the, now it's time for everything to really, like, hit the gas pedal as far as, like, storytelling goes, the first couple of, as the season works, you know, it's kind of like turning the uh, the car on at the beginning of the season, letting it sit for a while, and then finally deciding to hit the gas. Um, I think it's about pretty much time now. Uh, with Renly's death, kind of just shoots everything forward. So uh, that's where we are. Um, but like I said, um, it's odd. On a rewatch, this episode had a lot of great moments. But it felt a little bit of a mess to me, even on the rewatch. Um, like I said on the first watch, I almost didn't even enjoy it. And uh, visually, I thought it was definitely the worst of the year, of the season. But um, 
but still. Okay. Uh, oh, also by the way, any everybody that watched the ep the um, video I put up of of Ed Professor Tom's bar, hey, thanks for watching it. Damn, a lot of you. Um, more than these reviews, anyway. Uh, I'm gonna see. I would love to try to go back again this time, one time this season. I'm gonna try to anyway. Maybe for the finale. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay, so I'm gonna switch to the spoiler section now. Um, so if you haven't read the books or you don't want to know anything, stop. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Renly's death. I expected it differently. Um, I thought in the books, I thought like a, like it's just like another shadow, not like something walking up to him like it did on the show, but just like a shadow on like the wall just comes in like cuts. Renly's shadow, or just cuts. I, I, I don't, and that's how his throat o throat opens up, which I thought was much better visually than what they did on the show, and probably would have been much less expensive. But yeah, I, I honestly, I it was one of the few times I didn't like an edit something from the, the books into the show. But um, yeah, you know, what can you do? Um. I like the the cat brand relationship showing up uh, right away. Um, it's important later on when she's Stoneheart and hanging, having Bran hanged. Uh, Bran will say whatever the hell that word is, and it gets her out of some sort of trouble. So, you know, it was nice to see that. Um, again, Gwendolyn, uh, Gwendolyn Christie is betraying Bran's kind of. She's not too bright. And I saw that, and I liked that they did kind of kept that in, because that's what I kind of saw in the character a little bit, too. Obviously very strong and, you know, very kind and everything, but a little dim-witted, a little bit. And uh, at least that's what I get, so, you know. Um, what else? The little finger Marguerite thing, I, I love it. I love that they're setting that up already. Um, little fingers smile when she says she wants to be the queen. All I can think about is, like, Joffrey's death. And it makes me smile too. So I love that scene, and that's exactly why. Um, I like that Stannis was showing remorse for his brother. He was looking at the ships that his brother was just recently playing with. Um, I like that he, you know, like in the books, regressed and just kind of listened to Davos. It was one of my favorite things about the relationship between those two characters in the books that Stannis does listen to him. He's harsh, but he listens. Um, and it's nice to see Stannis open up, because uh, he won't ha be able to open up the way he does in the book about the, the peach, because they didn't show the peach in the last episode. Um, so that was a nice, that was a nice scene. Um, we didn't see, I think we saw Theon take the stony shore in the book and then decide to go to Torrance Square. Um, Dagmere Clefjaw, that was nice to see. What else? Uh, oh. Obviously there's no reeds, so Bran's dream was one of the green dreams the reeds had. Except I think they saw Bran dead in it, too. Obviously the show's not gonna go that route. Um, really no point, because he doesn't actually die, so. Um, so they changed that. That's fine. It also, it's like, it, you look at it, you like face palm, you're like, oh god, Theon, what are you doing? It's gonna go to shit, and just Bran, you're like, oh, don't send them there, it's gonna go to shit. Everything goes to shit in this story. Um, let's see, before I get, uh, okay, King's Landing. Um, I like that Cersei's drinking. It's one of my favorite things from the books. She just kind of walks around like a stumbling drunk. And then, you know. What else? Yeah, that's all I got. No, what else? Um, the wildfire. I'm glad the wildfire is in play. I'd like to see how they'll be able to do it uh, with the Battle of Blackwater. Like I said, it's nice to see if they're setting up the Battle of Blackwater. Um, and I expect it to be a big episode. I really do. Even on their budget. I expect it to be pretty big. I'm going to be disappointed if it's not. So, And they're setting it up to be pretty big. Um, so, good, so good on them. So that's something that I... Because they're setting it up to be big, I expect it to be big. And I think the audience is too. So, um, it's nice to see that they're going big. Um, what else? Uh, oh, everything with Bronn and King's Landing was just nice. The demon monkey line, one of my favorites. Um, 
All right, let me get out of King's Landing because I gotta wrap. I gotta try to finish this quick. John North of the Mall, half hand. Nice to see him. Um, looks like we get to meet Egret next week, which I love that they moved that up. Thank God. Um, so it'll be some nice drama for John. Which even even though they've they fast forwarded this season, it's been a little bit lacking. So it's um, it's nice to see that it's gonna get fast forwarded up. Um, brings a different element to the show. So. To John's at least section, so just mope it around. By the way, he looked, uh, Kit Harrington looked miserable, which was utterly hilarious. Uh, just some of his shots, he just, he's got like the wind and snow blowing his face, he just looked like he was so pissed off. It was really funny. Um, Korth, I love Zaro. He seems to be less gay than he appears to be in the book. At least, at least to me. Doesn't matter, I'm just saying that's what he appears, and he's not crying, that's obvious. Um, but I liked, I liked, you know, his whole wheelings and dealings. Um, I love the scene, but like I said, with Danny and Jorah, I loved Amelia Clark in this episode. Uh, my favorite thing um, was her invitation to the House of the Undying. Not just because they said it, because they, they have to do it, uh, but it's because they set it up in a very strange way. The the was it Pat Pre? His name is. You know, there being two of them, so the weirdness of it already before she even gets there tells me that it's going to be pretty, like, you know, some pretty trippy stuff, which it, I, I really hope it is. Um, I don't expect, I, I really don't expect it to be as crazy as it was in the book, anywhere near as crazy, but I hope it, I hope it is. And, um, yeah, it'll be nice to see. Uh, the inside of Korth, you know, we'll get some CGI shots of some stuff, I'm sure, eventually down the line. Uh, just not this week. I think I'm at the end here with Arya. Um, Arya's scene with Tywin, like I said, that's a change. It's a great change. Um, it shows how smart she is how, and how smart he is. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved it completely. She kills the Tickler, which people you know, up in arms about, like, oh, we're, we're going to lose the scene in the third book when she stabs him. She can just stab anybody that holds, like, needle. We don't need to see that scene with the tickler. It doesn't really matter. I was actually more upset that they had uh, jo Jock and Hagar kill him, and then she looks up and he does, like, the one. Because in the book, that's his second... The second one, he does, like, two. Because in the show, just like, he was, like, pointing to his eyeball. It was like, what do you... Look, you know, I'm watching you. Like, that's what it almost looked like more than that, but... Whatever. Um... Yeah, I think that's it. I'm sorry that this one's such a mess, but I wanted to get this one up uh, as early as I could. Um, and I know it's low. Just turn your volume up if you can. Of course, I say this at the end of the, uh, the, end of the review. Like, you know, that helps. Um, Alright, guys. Let me know what you thought. Adios. Bye.